everybody. How we doing, friends? Welcome back to the Family Dump Truck Company. Today, we've got an awesome day on our hands. The rain moved out last night, early on this morning. The sun's starting to rise here out of the east, and uh, it's going to be a little bit of a cooler day here, but a great day for working outside. Last couple of months, we've been doing a lot of work on the property, and uh, I've been stockpiling a lot of our brush, uh, limbs, things like that. Things like uh, that you would probably do on your own property as well too. We've been stockpiling in a big pile. A lot of it has been done with the Kubota, with the grapple. The pile's gotten big and now it's time to put it into the chipper. Today we decided to uh, reach out to Trevor and Nick up at Top Line Rentals in Wallingford, Connecticut. Great guys, two brothers, year and a half in the business and they're building a great business. So. Uh, very lucky to be able to rent a piece of equipment from them here today. We're really excited about how today is going to go, and uh, we'll see what happens. We have a 12-inch capacity brush cutter. It's a Bandit, model 12XP. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what's going to happen here. Okay. So we'll check back in with you here in a little bit, and uh, we'll show you some different footage throughout the day here. Certainly a very big pile, and uh, we'll see if we can turn your attention here really quick, and you guys can see what we've what we got going on here. A lot of material. Let's see if we can zoom out just a little bit. Maybe not. We're still trying to get a hang of this uh, this whole YouTube thing here. <laughs> so, but uh, we're going to get a lot of work done here today. Certainly with the grapple, and certainly with the wood chipper. Like I said, this is a Bandit Model 12 XP. This is a 12-inch capacity. A little bit bigger than what we need, but I don't like putting equipment under any type of stress. So we've got plenty of capacity to be able to take all of our brush. Most of this stuff is anywhere between probably three and six inches. But uh, very wet. A lot of rain here last night. So but anyway, that's what we got going on here today. And uh, we'll check back in with you here in just a little bit once we kind of get things up and running and uh, we'll go from there. Really appreciate you sticking around. Let's have some fun today. So one very important thing we want to talk about here really quick, when we're using equipment like this, okay, we've rented chippers before, we've used chippers before, we're around heavy equipment quite a bit. Some of you out there, maybe this is your first time. Maybe this is something that you want to try. Can't express to you enough making sure that you're safe, okay? You guys can't see everything right now, but we've got our chainsaw chaps that I'm gonna be wearing while I'm out here today because I'm probably gonna be running the saw at some point for some of this stuff. I've got my hard hat, I've got my, my ear protection, gloves, I'll have my safety glasses on. And also, whenever I picked the equipment up this morning from Nick and Trevor, one of the very first things that we did was we went around the outside of the piece of equipment and uh, we did a quick little tutorial. Even though I've used equipment like this before, I haven't used this particular piece of equipment before. So a lot of the newer equipment, electronic controls, computers, different safety equipment, different safety shutoffs, all things that we want to be really well uh, versed in whenever we're utilizing a piece of equipment like this. So I can't express that enough. It's so incredibly important. Safety, making sure that you know what you're doing and the piece of equipment that you're using for the day that you know it really, really well. Okay, so that's just something I just want to touch upon really quick before we start and get into having a little bit of fun here today, okay? Because we're going to have fun. It's going to be a gorgeous day. Check back with you in a bit. All right, guys, here we go.
we're going to try it. So here, we've got large pile brush. Everything's been thrown in here over the course of the last couple of months. So it's all entangled. Some of the stuff's a little bit bigger than what the tripper can actually handle because of the fact that we've got the rocks in the limb here. So we've got our saw fired up. We're going to take a couple of cuts, make it easier and more manageable for the see. Some stuff like this down here where you've got the front section of the log. Take the root section off. It's a lot more manageable for the machine. They're not going to hurt the machine. Hey friends, how we doing? All right, quick lunch break. Nothing like a hot roast beef sandwich and a, and a, and a soft drink to get you recharged here for the second half of the day. Well, definitely living up to a beautiful day here today. I don't see a cloud in the sky. This is gorgeous here. Let me turn you around here for a second. You can see. Not one cloud. Perfect. 
here we are right back down to where all the action is right now so come back around here <clears throat> so before we broke for lunch we were talking about how we were taking some of the larger logs limbs brush so forth and bringing it over to the machine with the grapple instead of having to do it by hand so much easier and you can definitely see a lot of the um the byproduct, okay, is like uh, of the chipping process. So what we're going to do, I'm actually going to take this off of the stand, okay, and we're going to show you guys a little bit more in detail and kind of walk around here a little bit. All right. So. <clears throat> Right below the infeed hopper, okay, there's a kind of like an offshoot, and that's where a lot of the the leaf debris, small twigs, stuff like that, stuff that the, the chipper shouldn't be handling or can't handle because it's actually so small and fine. Um, builds up underneath there, and then I have my rake, and I just pull everything out and keep it free and clear, okay? So, come over here. You can see here where we're standing right now, okay? This was all brush. We've been able to tackle all this in just a few short hours. I am working by myself. Uh, it's, it's definitely a lot doing it by yourself without having help, you know, but uh, that's all right. We're good. The equipment is a massive, massive plus. I'll take you over here just for a split second. So here's our chip pile. Now I'm surprised at how much chip we've got here already. We got quite a bit of chip. It's hard to tell, okay? But um, this is probably to the top right here. It's a solid three feet high, all of it. And I'd have to say that from here over to about here, it's probably about 18 feet long, maybe 20 feet long. So we're definitely shooting chip quite a distance. We got some other stuff over here that we want to grab before we return to Chipper today. Um, I had mentioned before that we rented this from Top Line Rentals, Trevor and Nick up in Wallingford. It's my first experience with them and so far very pleased with this piece of equipment. This is a Bandit Intimidator 12 XP. It's gasoline. It's got a gas engine and uh, it's a 12 inch capacity. So. This is the first time we've rented something like this on, excuse me, no, it's not. We've rented a chipper before. This is the first time we've rented something this large here on the property. Um, very happy. So this is making quick work of all the stuff, all the brush. This is just six months to a year's worth of uh, debris that we had uh, stockpiled over here. And I knew that we were gonna get to this point one day where we had to bring the chipper in and chip everything up. I will tell you this though, one thing that I know that I really kind of screwed up on is how I how I stockpiled all the brush in here. So you can see the brush is kind of, I wouldn't say haphazardly, but I don't have all the bigger ends facing one direction, okay? And I knew it, it's my own fault, whenever I stockpiled all the brush in here that I was going to have to kind of sort it out as I went along. And uh, that's been a little bit more of a hassle for me than what I really had anticipated. So a little bit of a learning lesson there. If I spend a little bit more time on the upfront uh, while I'm stockpiling all my brush and have all of the larger diameter ends of the limbs all down here on one end instead of half on this side, half on the other side, uh, it just makes for a much more efficient process whenever we go to chip because you want to take the heel, okay, which is this larger end right here. You want to take that end there and insert that into the throat of the chipper first. And that way you're going from larger to small and everything's going, for lack of a better term, with the grain. You can see how the hopper, throat if you will, I keep saying hopper. It's really more of a throat. You can see how it's tapered. 
So you want to be able to feed the larger section of it in first, and then all the brush comes in behind it. So, so we're going to fire things back up here. I'm bringing you around here to show you the control panel really quick. This is very nice. This is electronic. It's turnkey. And what we have right here is this. All we're going to do... That's that. <clears throat> so we're going to let things warm up here again for a few minutes. And we'll jump right back into it. I know most of you really haven't seen this yet. This is the grapple, the, as we call it, the claw. <laughs> the kids call it the claw, the lobster claw. Uh, this does a lot. The top part of the clamshell, the bottom part of the clamshell, and obviously our Kubota. So we'll have some more footage in here in a little bit, pulling some more to brush out. But uh, very happy with how things are going here today. We've got the second half of the day here upon us. So again, one beautiful, typical New England weekend day. All right, guys, be safe out there. Today's a great day to be kind. Get out and tell somebody that you, that you care about them. Tell your family you love them. It's good stuff. We'll catch up with you here in just a little bit, okay? All right, guys, we're back. Uh, I'm behind the camera right now. I'm trying to take you around and kind of show you a little bit about what we're doing here. The pile over here is completely gone. We've, uh, we've really done a number on it for sure, without a doubt. You can see, here's the chip pile from right around. And, uh, we got most of it. We got a little bit more down over in here. get some of this now so we're gonna set the camera up and uh, we'll let you see what it's like coming in here with the grapple and pulling some of this material out of here we'll see if we can get over to the chipper we got maybe another hour or two left with the chipper so we're uh, getting pretty close to wrapping it up very very happy with how things have gone here today very happy so what we'll probably do over here in the background and we'll show the Kubota basically coming in through here and down over into there. Hey gang, so basically what's going on here, okay? We thought we'd uh, thought we'd try a voiceover. Might work out a little bit better. Chipper was really loud. Tried the audio a little bit in the beginning in uh, other various parts of the, uh, uh, of the video series here uh, with all the equipment running and uh, in some areas it was kind of hard to Hard to hear, so we thought we'd maybe try our hand at uh, some other type of editing here uh, with the voiceover. So anyway, so we're going to go of it. So in this part of the video here, really what we want to illustrate is how equipment helps us, right? And it helps us be what? More efficient? We can get a lot more done in a shorter period of time, okay? And it leaves us time to do what? Spend time with our family, okay? Things that are more enjoyable than, than always working outside. So here we're using the grapple and we're pulling a lot of the material out from uh, from inside the woods, much like we did with the big pile. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I was very overwhelmed uh, with the amount of work that I knew that I had to do this particular day, mainly because I was working by myself, which is fine. Um, the pile was huge. And you can see how much we were able to get done in a, in a fairly short period of time. Here we're grabbing another log out of the woods. This is an old cedar log, very dry, still has lots of broken limbs on it. Something like this is going to be really easy to put into the wood chipper. The wood chipper will just take this and the infeed rollers will just pull it right in. But uh, coming up in the clip here in just a second, uh, it's really going to show how the machine uh, tempers itself, meaning it, um, it can read how much of a load it's under and the infeed rollers will actually stop, allow the machine to come back up to full operating RPM and then it'll pull more material into the wood chipper and you'll see it here as the, the wood chips They eject out like that stops Then ejects again stops. That's the machine basically reading how much of a load it's under and uh, Adjusting how much material to pull in through the infeed rollers, which is really great. You can take a, a big piece basically set it in the throat and uh, carefully walk away from it 
uh, but you can you can carefully walk away from it and allow the machine to uh, be able to pull the material in while you're going to get the next piece and uh, kind of keep things going along. So here we are back in the woods again, grabbing some more of the debris. And uh, I don't have any clips to add to this particular uh, video at this time, but uh, this was all work that we had completed on Saturday. Sunday we got in here with the brush hog, really cleaned everything out. I uh, got uh, all the, uh, the leaf vegetation and, and all the, the garbage that we couldn't ship. Got all that cleaned up and stockpiled in another area. And we came through with the brush hog, uh, made some more trails uh, for the kids and got them all chipped. Looks really great. And it was actually uh, not until after I got all this work done on Saturday that we were able to um, really create some definition on uh, where... Uh, we wanted to go with cleaning out this side of the property. The trees, as you can see here on the left-hand side, that favor uh, where the equipment is, that's where we're going to end up bringing our manicured lawn to. And then on the right-hand side, where the wood still is, uh, that's where we're going to have the uh, the trails come through for the kids and also for the equipment to kind of go around along the outskirts of the property line and uh, not have to worry about running over our grass. So, but... Uh, that's basically it here. Uh, we're just kind of wrapping up this segment and showing you guys a little bit more about what the uh, what the grapple can do. We couldn't have as many action videos as we wanted to just because it was tough running the camera and doing the work, but uh, we certainly hope you guys enjoyed some of the footage here. And uh, we're learning as we go along, but we're having a lot of fun. Thanks for sticking around, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll catch you here in just a little bit. Okay, friends, so here's what we got going on. Earlier this year, I decided that I wanted to do something for the kids. Okay, so we have uh, we have two acres here, and um, you know certainly with the, the the COVID stuff and so forth going on, uh, you know where do we want to be? We want to be at home. So I decided to do something for my kids here, and I decided to make a trail. My son Riley, our son Riley, uh, turned five this year, and we got him a, a Power Wheels dune buggy. So we decided to make a trail going through here. First, we'll stop over here really quick. This is our firewood. This is how we handle our firewood. We palletize it. I've got 21 pallets. Each pallet has got uh, two courses of 16 inch long firewood. This is the only one that doesn't have a, a tarp on it. I gotta get a tarp on it, but I use a plastic uh, four mil uh, plastic. All it does is just keep the water and the ice off, but it allows all the air to flow through and allow the wood to season and breathe. But uh, we have 21 of these here right now, and these are all ready for this winter. But anyway, just really quick, just showing you what we did here. So this is the trail. And basically, the whole idea here was, where do you want your kids to be? You want to be somewhere safe. But you want them to have fun. And they gotta get outside and Enjoy the, uh, enjoy the environment, enjoy the air. We have to finish a little bit down there. You know, kind of come over through there and around the other side, but we made this cut through here. We had tons of fallen trees and, and dead limb wood in here from years and years and years of storms. We just cut this path through here today so I'll take you through here, okay? I'm gonna come through to, through here with the brush hog maybe tomorrow and uh, some of the chip that we have from what we just did here, we'll, uh, we'll chip it. But kids will have fun coming through there. And here's our chip pile from today. Easily four feet tall and definitely probably about 20 feet long. There's a lot of chip there. But this is the other side of the trail here where it starts. And we just kind of loop around through here. But the kids get to come through. They come through here on their bikes. Sometimes my wife and I will come through here and walk. Maybe a glass of wine or a beer at the end of the day. And it's peaceful. It's calming. This was all wood chipped. Um, 
eh, probably about two months ago or so, maybe a month and a half ago, and obviously with the uh, fall upon us here now, the leaves are starting to fall and it's covering the trail, but this is where it ends. And we just gotta kinda get through all of this here and punch through to the other side. So uh, this will probably be uh, part of a, a series in our uh, in our videos, but that's, uh, that's about it. But the kids have a lot of fun with it. They come through here with the dune buggy. They're home, they're safe, we know where they are. They're getting out and they're enjoying they're enjoying the property, they're enjoying the environment. So that's good. And above all, it's they're safe. So that's what we got going on. It's another little pathway that we cut through here today. And some more cleanup to do. But that's that. Maybe you guys can maybe uh down in the comments uh, or send us uh, send us a comment on uh, on Facebook what you guys think what you think the next chapter of the of the trails here should be for the uh, for the kids okay love to see that love to love to see some of those uh, some of those thoughts and ideas Hi friends, <laughs> what a day here. I'm excited. Um, in closing, talking about the wood chipper here, fantastic. We got everything that we wanted to get done here today and more. I'm gonna take you over here in just a second and show you everything that we got done. And then uh, we got a special treat for you as well too, okay? We're gonna take you for a, a quick walk through some trails that I made for the, for the kids. And we're gonna tell you a little bit about what we got going on there with that as well. But uh, the chipper worked out great. Everything that we wanted to get done here, uh, we had uh, some uh, larger size uh, limbs, almost kind of like small logs, tons of brush, softwood, hardwood, you name it. It, uh, it ate it all. Um, definitely a learning experience for me. Like I said, uh, I think whenever I was piling everything here over the course of the last couple of months, uh, I didn't take as much care as what I should have to properly plan for today, meaning, I had stuff that, you know, the larger end was over here, the larger end was over there, um, and then having to try and pull it out, take it all apart, turn it around, renegotiate it into the uh, the throat on the uh, the chipper took more time. Obviously, time inefficient. So, but it is what it is. Uh, I can't say anything uh, bad about today because we got everything done that we wanted to get done here. So. Uh, I would have to say, if you're looking at renting a wood chipper and you think you need a six inch, go up to a nine inch. If you think you need a nine inch, go up to a 12 inch. What was great about having such a large machine here today, I didn't have to worry about over capacitizing the machine. You know, the, the machine was never uh, at, its, at its max. Uh, most of the stuff that we were putting in there, it could easily handle, uh, which is great. You know, you don't have to put the machine under a lot of stress and duress. So, uh, so that, that's what I would say. Those would be my, uh, my, my two cents worth of advice. The other thing too, and we talked about this before, the safety aspect of it, okay? Again, I've used the chipper before, so I know what to look out for. Someone that's maybe a, an inexperienced operator that's maybe, you know, renting one for the first time, a great recommendation for you would be Maybe a friend that's rented one before or someone that you know has rented one before, maybe have them with you as a buddy, okay? First of all, you should never really be out here doing this by, your, by yourself. I was today and I fought myself for it. I shouldn't. Um, but there's a lot of things that, you know, everybody thinks just take the wood, throw in the wood chipper and it's, uh, uh, you know, no big deal. Um, once the uh, infeed rollers get a hold of whatever it is that you're putting in there, that's it. You have no control, zero. So if a limb is coming into the infeed rollers, going into the actual uh, uh, tub where the grinder is, and uh, let, let's say the, the, the shape of the limb is um, maybe got a radius to it, 
uh, or maybe uh, there's a crotch, okay, and there's a twin stem, and it kind of renders itself and kind of moves around like this. If you're standing next to it, guess who's going to get hit? You. So um, that uh, th those would be some words of advice that I would have to say. You rent one for the first time. Have somebody with you that's used it before. I'm telling you right now, it's uh, it's going to make the day so much better. All right. So, friends, in closing, I want to say thanks for checking us out again here today. Uh, I was talking a little bit before earlier about how um, uh, we learned a lot from our previous video. Uh, I realized that it was definitely too long. Uh, I was trying to squeeze too much in. Um, many people commented that uh, I wasn't close enough to the camera, kind of like how I am now. Uh, didn't realize that. I, I'm learning this whole editing thing too, so I wasn't comfortable with taking snippets of this video and snippets of that video and putting everything together. It was my first video, so I tried to set the camera up where I could just, you know, shoot and that's it. So today we caught some different angles, some different things going on and uh, we're going to test my editing skills and see how things go and putting everything together. So uh, th those are some takeaways from our, from our previous video. So, okay. But uh, again, thanks a lot for checking us out here today. Remember, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with your friends. And uh, remember right here, be kind. This is what it's all about right here, okay? Love your kids, hug your family, and uh, definitely tell your kids that they, uh, that they mean a lot. It's very, very important, all right? Thanks for checking us out. Have a great weekend, friends. Be kind.